Well, the catalytic converter thieves are at it again. The owner of this truck just had a few neighbors get their catalytic converter stolen, and he wants to make sure it doesn't happen to him. So we're gonna put on a Miller Cat cat shield. Hey, what's up YouTube, Dan the Fix-It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm gonna show you how to install a Miller Cat cat shield on a 2023 Ford F-150 Platinum. This is the non-hybrid with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, and this is also four-wheel drive. This is a really heavy shield, so you're gonna need some help to either hold that up or maybe a jack stand to balance that on while you install it. Now, it's not recommended to use power tools when installing these. Of course, use that at your own risk if you want to. You will need some protective gloves and eyewear. We're also gonna need a 15 millimeter deep socket, a bit driver, ratchet with an extension, and a torque wrench. Now here it says an eight millimeter socket. That's only required if you have the splash shield. This truck does not have it. If you do have that little splash shield up underneath, you'll need to take that splash shield off in order to put this on, and then you can put it back on when you're done. But those are just four eight millimeter bolts that hold that splash shield in place. And it is important that you apply this thread locker that they include to all of these fasteners when putting it together. Before we take the shield underneath the vehicle, we're going to put these little wing plates on the shield and get those tightened up. Now I'm just going to put the thread locker on these four small M8 bolts and then we're going to attach those wing plates to the main shield. Just line those up with these holes here. Same with the other side here. Now on these wing plates, we can go ahead and tighten these before we take it down. Everything else you're gonna to wanna to leave loose until the end and it does give you a tightening sequence. And we'll tighten these to 80 to 100 inch pounds. Or just make them snug by hand. Just make sure you don't strip these. All right, now we're under the vehicle. I'm over on the passenger side. Now we need to use a 15 millimeter deep socket to take off these two nuts that hold the sway bar bracket to the frame. There we go. Now you can see here is a factory stud bracket and we need to take this out to get the shield in through here. So we'll just take this out and set it aside. Now on the driver's side of the anti-sway bar bracket right here, these nuts, we just need to loosen these for right now. All right, now we need to put in the passenger front side bracket here. You just slide it in through this opening. The reason for loosening that side is just to give us a little bit more wiggle room here. You can see how this is now loose and we should be able to slide this in between and line up those holes right there. All right, now grab the factory stud bracket here and we're gonna put that through, positioning it right back where it was. Now we can put these 15 millimeter nuts back on. Right now we're just gonna thread these on loosely. We're not tightening anything yet. There's still a lot of thread locker on these factory studs here, so I'm not adding any additional thread locker. All right, now I'm here on the driver's side and we can remove these two 15 millimeter nuts. Now let's make that go quicker here. And then we can take out that stud plate here. Set that aside for just a minute. And then this one here is the driver's side front shield. And all we need to do is just slide that in. And then we need to put the stud plate back through. And we'll get these 15 millimeter nuts started on those. Again, leaving these all loose while we're working on the rest of the shield. Now, if you come back here to this transmission cross member, now these are nut plates that go into that cross member. These are going to be with the nut facing up and the round part faces in or to the center. And all you need to do is just slide it in until the two holes show up into that large oval opening right there. Here we are on the other side and just slide it in from the end right about there. All right, now the instructions say that you can position a jack stand right up underneath this exhaust pipe right here that runs parallel with the transmission cross member. I'm on the ground and I have not lifted up the truck. I took the top part out of my jack stand to get it a little bit lower. Right now we're about three inches down. It says to do five to six inches down. I'm gonna see if this works to hold up the main shield while we connect the front part. If it doesn't, I might have to get something else, but I'm gonna try that for right now. Now here's the tricky part. I'm gonna try to slide the main shield in here. <laughs> Rest it up on that jack stand. I think that's gonna work. Now I need to get the parts of the main shield underneath, see if I can do that. Just get the middle one started for now. And I already put the thread locker on all of these before I brought them down underneath the vehicle. Okay, I'm not snugging that, just getting the middle one started on this passenger side. And then we gotta go do the driver's side. You know, that thread lock just kinda makes these slippery and kinda hard to get started, but you can do it. 
we can go ahead and get these two started on either side. And then we can go ahead and start these ones on the passenger side. I just put the top part back into the jack stand so that I can bring this up a little bit taller. All right, now we need to secure the rear portion of the shield here to the two nut plates. And these are the M8 fasteners. I already have thread locker on them and these are the longer ones. I'm just holding on to the nut plate here with my left hand while I do this to kind of help get these started. There it is. Okay, let's do the other one. You can see those are still very loose because we still need to get the other side started. All right, we can get the jack stand out of the way. All right, now you need to do a visual on the whole shield. Just make sure that you're lined up in between or on the inside of this transmission cross member bolt. And just make sure right here that the shield is centered in between and not touching the frame rail. Okay, here we are on the passenger side. Here's the same bolt. Just make sure that we're on the inside of this bolt here as well and that we're not touching or close to the frame rail on this side. So that all looks good. So now the tightening sequence begins here so we can fully tighten these six screws right here, the ones that connect the front shield to the main shield. There's three on either side. And you're gonna to wanna to tighten these to 80 to 100 inch pounds. And then we can tighten these three on this side. All right, now we can re-tighten these nuts that hold the sway bar bracket on. I am gonna use the battery powered Milwaukee here to get these snug first. We'll get these torqued to 46 foot-pounds. Same with the passenger side here. And now we can fully tighten the rear part of the shield with these M8 fasteners. Again, we're gonna to torque these to 80 to 100 inch-pounds. All right, that looks good. Now the last step we need to do is install these nut covers. That prevents somebody from being able to use a 15 millimeter socket to take this off, drop down the sway bar and try to bend this down or get to the catalytic converters. That just positions over the stud. Just get the little M8 security bolt started. Now the goal here is when you tighten this, you don't want this touching the stud. Just get it snug and then I'm just going to kind of position that or center that so that it's not touching anything. It's not touching the stud. It's just centered on either side and then we'll tighten this. Give it a little bump with the ratchet to make sure that it's still centered. But that looks good. Let's go do the other side. This little thumb spinner comes in handy when doing this. It's not touching the stud. This looks good. And you're done. Well, it was a pretty quick and easy install. I did this by myself and it took about an hour. Uh, this is a very heavy duty shield, very heavy as well. And I think if you had an extra set of hands, that would probably make things a little bit easier. But I was able to get that done with the jack stand, just doing it myself. And really everything went pretty smoothly, just kind of difficult to line up the front shields with the main shield. That was probably the hardest part. But again, having an extra set of hands would probably make that go a little bit easier. But I got it done and uh, definitely looks good. I'm very impressed with the overall quality of the Miller Cat shields. And I just wanted to say thank you to Miller Cat for sending this to me. This was sent to me in exchange for this quick installation video and product review. And definitely I would endorse this product. This is something that I've been very impressed with. Uh, this is, I think the seventh one that I've done and very good product overall. I would highly recommend you pick this up and put this on or get it put on as soon as possible. You know, it's a pretty small investment to protect these catalytic converters, which are extremely expensive. But even if you have insurance, it is such a hassle and such a terrible failing to go out and start your truck in the morning to open exhaust it just really can startle you and it really bums you out you feel violated you get so angry you get so upset and then of course you start thinking man i should have done that so now if you have a newer f-150 you probably already know that you are going to be targeted for these catalytic converters because the scrap value in these catalytic converters is so high now that people are just so brazen they'll just cut these off in, in the middle of the day even in your driveway no regard of course for you or the hassle that they've caused or the expense uh, you know thieves are just cutting these off in broad daylight in parking 
working lots. It has been proven that if you have a catalytic converter shield like this, that it is a very good deterrent. They've got video surveillance of people rolling underneath a car or crawling underneath a car. And as soon as they see something like this, they move on. They'll move on to the next target. If this has already happened to you and you've had your catalytic converter stolen, I'm very, very sorry. I know it's terrible. You know, you can also paint and engrave the converters. That also helps. But I like the idea of the shield, just making it so they can't even get to them without a lot of extra steps or a lot of extra hassle. So I think it's worth it. I would definitely pick this up. Now this is fully removable. If you ever need to do any kind of service on the transmission or anything like that, make sure you put those security bits in a safe place. So if you ever have to take that off in the future, you can do that. I hope you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. Now MillerCat was also kind enough to send me a coupon code for all of my viewers. So I'm going to put that up here on the screen for you and you can enter that in at checkout or I'm also going to put a link in the description to this exact product, but that will also qualify you for a discount on anything on their site. Thanks so much for watching and good luck. Thank you.